Hello, hello. We are live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And I'm here with my old friend, Melanie Benson. I'm always afraid to say old friend because I don't mean you're old. I mean, I'm I was going to say, I was going to say, I'm feeling old now. No, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> long time friend, long time friend. Exactly. That's much better. So um, I'm doing some fun stuff with Melanie, and you may have seen me promoting the Create Your Own Economy giveaway, which we'll talk about. But one of the interesting things, that I want to talk to Melanie about because I know she's sort of an expert in this is probably two or three times in the last couple of weeks I've heard people use the expression revenue roller coaster like they had a really good September and a miserable October or they had a, uh, a not so great summer and all of a sudden things are great and I know as entrepreneurs you know we're not getting a set amount of paycheck every other week and you know I like the fact that I can control that and you know adjust the spigot. But what do you think about this whole concept of a revenue roller coaster for entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think it's uh it's like a plight, right? It's one of the things that we're always going to be up against as entrepreneurs is uh, we don't have a predictable paycheck that we're going to get, mm -hmm. but we can create predictable cash flow. And there are some things that we can do to affect how cash flows in our business. And one of the things that I think uh, my, my brain's wrapped around this idea, of what does it take to create our own economy? And I think predictable mm -hmm. cash flow is one of those elements. It's like if we could count on cash flowing in. And so maybe we should look at like what's missing that puts people in this place where they're vulnerable to the <laughs> ebbs and flows of the market and, and you know what's going on around us. And I think one of them is uh, sometimes we forget that we can be our own cash machine. Like uh, we get either locked into these routines or we don't have uh, something that is designed to create repeatable revenue streams. And so we're really vulnerable to big clients coming in or a launch not performing the way we hoped. Or um, if we have, pro you know, a lot of people count on, Facebook and things like that to drive revenue through ads. So mm -hmm. if any of that stuff goes down, then we are now vulnerable, right? Right. So that's in my mind. One of the big things is, is it starts with this idea that we have to change our thinking so that we are no longer at the effect of what's happening around us. We have to decide, like, I am going to be in charge of my own economy and I'm going to design things that can perform no matter what's going on. But you know what's occurring to me, Lou, is sometimes we can have, you know, it's like the best laid plans. Like we can have all the best plans in the world and something still goes awry. And I know I've had that happen before. And so I teach something called uh, creating financial reserves. It's not like a unique principle or anything, mm -hmm. but it's mind blowing how many entrepreneurs don't have any kind of financial reserves. Yeah. Have you bumped into that as well in your teachings yeah, over I, the years? I calls it a, a war chest. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's really a simple concept, but I think what happens is we forget again, like to be having our own economy, we had to kind of bulletproof our revenue. We have to bulletproof our wealth. We have to mm -hmm. bulletproof our, our ability to take leaps no matter what's going on. Last year, when everything kind of went down with the pandemic, I decided that I was going to double down. And I was going mm -hmm. to actually invest in growth rather than pull back, which I know a lot of people were doing because there was a lot of fear. Right. And the, the only reason I could do that is, is I had financial reserves. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some of my cash flow was affected. Some of the people that uh, were considering joining a program were like, oh, I think I need to hold off. I don't, you know, there's so much uncertainty. Uh -huh. And when you have financial reserves set aside, that gives you a cushion of confidence to make a leap no matter what's happening with your cash flow. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there that sometimes there are three or four strategies we need to have in place so that we can be immune to the ebbs and flows of the world around us and yeah. be able to uh, keep growing and keep doing what we need to do to, to, to thrive in business. Yeah. So how important, I guess it's important to have a plan B because again, I know folks who rely on live events who couldn't do them mm -hmm. last year yeah. or retreats or, you know, you know, just about anything that was in person was out the sure. window. Sure. So, um, and, you know, some people did great and some people not so much. How can yeah. you buffer yourself or, you know, get ready for something like unpredictable like that? Such a great question. So what I'm about to share may be a little like um, 
mind blowing in terms of <laughs> like, it's not a strategy. It's a way of being. Mm. And I think the people who thrived were the people who live and breathe this idea that we can create our own economy. Cause here's the key. Like we can have our best plan, but there are always going to be things we can't control. We can't predict. We can't plan for. Right. That's why I teach 80% plan. We cannot plan for everything that's going to happen, mm -hmm. but what we can be is resourceful. We can be committed to thriving no matter what. We can be uh, cultivating an inner strength that no matter what's happening around us, we can choose to be the people that are going to rise above it and find a way through it. So I was watching, I was in a room at an event, I was facilitating uh, a friend's mastermind and uh, there was a lot of speakers and event hosts in the room. And I literally, I, I was in two back-to-back -back events and I literally watched the faces of the people who made their living on events just crush like they they were like in their minds going oh my god oh my god what am i going to do some of them pivoted quickly mm -hmm. they got resourceful and they tapped into what was available and they actually made more money mm -hmm. more they made a greater impact because what they realized was is that this was something they couldn't control they couldn't make it go away so they were going to have to adapt quickly and so adapting i think is a superpower and when we are resourceful beings and we choose to see opportunity when there is challenge or frustration then we become resourceful if we see problems and we're like oh my god this is a problem there's no way out i don't know what to do we limit ourselves right and strict we shut down and so honestly like i think 80 percent of being able to create our own economy starts with what's happening up here and is completed by the actions, the strategies, the decisions that we make from that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because I'll be honest with you, when I was first an entrepreneur, I, I came from, you know, traditional TV business. I was used to that 401k and every check every other week. And when you are responsible for your own income, it's a little scary. But on the other mm -hmm. side, if you're responsible for your own income, you know, if your job was 80 grand a year, it's like, you, you don't have that level anymore. You can go wherever you want. Yeah. Uh, I came out of corporate. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for 15 years of my life, I had some, or actually longer because I've been working since I was like 14, but I, I had someone else giving me a paycheck. I had a 401k. I had a company that paid for my car. Like I had a lot of um, cushion and safety net. And all that got taken away when I made the decision to leave and start my own business. And what I realized was I really struggled with it for the first almost two years. Mm -hmm. And it was, again, it was a change in my thinking. I had to change what I believed and what I saw and how I approached everything to turn the game around and to create consistent cash flow coming in. And nobody was going to do it for me, right? There was no golden cash machine that someone else was turning on. It was like I had to turn it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the other side of that is, again, the thing I love about Create Your Own Economy and the idea of it and why I, I was so excited about doing this with you is that I've seen it, you know, like even in the last couple months, like I decided I wanted to do um, a program with a mutual friend, Michael Port, and mm -hmm. it was really expensive. And I'm like, well, it's not, you know, I didn't budget for it. It's not really in the plan. I'm like, oh, I know. <laughs> I'll do, I'll sell something. I'll do yeah. a promotion. And, you know, you hear about all this, oh, I made 10 grand. I'm like, yeah, I did make 15 grand in a week. And it's like, okay, good. Because I can turn that faucet on or off, which is cool, that spigot. So you probably have a barking pug in the background because you just muted. So <laughs> did you mute on purpose or did I do that? Yes, yeah, sorry. We got a little dog uh, protection device going off in the yeah, background. That's fine. <laughs> Melanie and I are both pug people. And as soon as I found out you had a pug, I'm like, okay, BFF for life. That's it. So. No worries, because you're going to hear Rocco and Regina. Um, we have two now. Um, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> but yeah, so I apologize if Dante's a little uh, noisy in the background. He no thinks we, he yes, needs to protect I, me right now. But uh, same going on here. You know, I, I wanted to. About, um, I'm going to. I wanted to add something to what you just said, though. Yeah, yeah. Because you said something really powerful about like I I wanted this. I was like, eh, it's a it's it's expensive, right? So two things. One, we can afford anything we ever want for our business growth, but everything is attached to a decision. 
And I think this is this is one of the pillars I teach in Create Your Own Economy. Mm-hmm. And I'll be I'm, I've been going through these in in our Facebook group. We put a Facebook group together for everybody going through and getting the gifts and you know wanting to like be a rising tide together. Is this idea? What happens when we make a decision? The decision activates our mind looking for a way to get what we've decided to have. When we're in indecision or uh, or lack of clarity or we don't have uh, this commitment to something, it's very easy to come up with all the logical reasons in the world why this is not going to be a good idea. We can't have it. We can't afford it, right? Like we let uh, other factors determine what we need and want. So mm-hmm. being able to turn on, be, be able to create your own economy basically means you start with a decision. This is who I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to have. This is how I'm going to impact the world. This is the kind of money I'm going to make. And then the rest follows. Exactly. I'm so glad you said that because it's like, I, you know, it's like you can be the puppet or you can be the puppeteer, right? Yes. So I'm going to put up my little link to create your own economy. And I want you to talk a little bit about the the giveaway, what's involved. Sure. I know there's really awesome folks in it and what kinds of goodies people can get there. Yeah. So this is me tapping into something I call collaboration currency. And I believe that when we gather with other amazing people, we create a rising tide and lift all the boats together. And I, last year, this was the first year we did it last year. I knew that we had to like bond together and like help people realize we can do this. We can not just create our own economy, but we can actually stimulate and activate the economy at large Mm -hmm. by continuing to make money, by continuing to pay people to circulate prosperity, you know, in our community. And I, and I believe that a lot of people were changed by that. So this year we want to kind of continue on this thriving path. And I gathered 21 other people who I know live and breathe this concept of creating their own economy and asked them if they would gift or give away basically one of their best resources that will help you learn how to create your own economy, whether it was mindset or strategy or uh, learning how to leverage your time, your talent, whatever the piece is. And I, and I basically no two gifts are the same. Nobody's giving away the same information. Everybody's got a piece of the puzzle and it's absolutely free, but only until November 5th, which is when it all goes back to uh, charging full price. There's over $7,000 worth of resources in it. And all of that is great when you uh, use uh, Lou's link here, loubortone.com forward slash CYOE, you're going to get access to join us in the giveaway. We have a special download page and there's a couple other things that we've designed to help this be something where it's not just a bunch of information, it's actually strategically designed to help you thrive. So we have a Facebook group where you can ask questions. You, you know, we're spotlighting some of the experts and going a little bit deeper and getting inside their mind. Like, how do you really do this? I'm sharing extra tips. I'm going through each of the pillars. You're going to be able to make connections with other people in the community because that's where a lot of this turn stimulate your own economy, like turn it on, like comes from the collaborations you form with other people. So we've got Lou's gift and Lou, I'll let you share what that is, but we've got some other amazing things. We've got somebody who uh, is just brilliant at mindset. She's gifted her program on how to create a fearless business mindset. Super exciting. That's the the feature today in the group. Uh, We've got uh, somebody who's teaching you how to turn your social media conversations into trust building conversations that ignite sales. Nice. Really powerful. Uh, we've got someone teaching how to host your own live events, either in person or virtually, and literally turn it into a profit center for your business. Yep. So, I mean, that's just tip, the tip of the iceberg. I could go on, but it would take like probably 20 minutes just to cover yeah. them all. And the thing I like about it is, you know, in some of these giveaways, sometimes like, oh, I'll just take a freebie and throw it. It's like, this stuff is, is gold. I mean, there's yeah. really good, valuable resources. These are, these are tools, trainings, and resources that people normally charge for. Mm-hmm. And I've asked them to gift them to our community. Yep. So in my case, I've got my uh, cool tools thing because I've found, you know, I can do a lot more like people say, oh my God, I see you everywhere. It's like, well, I I try to take these video tools and these resources and actually use them so that they save me time and money. So, So that's my jam and that's my stuff. But there's tons of other stuff in there 
really, really valuable resources. The other question I had, or the other, you know, slight, not objection, but what I, one of my challenges with giveaways like this is like, oh my God, there's so much good stuff. How can I actually use it and consume yeah. it? I know you, you've addressed that a bit. So do you want to talk about? Yeah. So one of the, there's two ways that we're supporting people with that. First of all, there'll be Q and A time in the Facebook group where you can ask some questions. Um, but the second, well, actually it's three things we've done. <laughs> a second thing I did is I put together an action guide where you can start to identify wh what are the things that are really hot for you? Where are your gap areas? Mm -hmm. So yes, you can have all the greatest tools in the world in your toolbox. And you might just want to download all of it because you never know where you're going to be in your business and what tool you're going to need next, right? But I want you to prioritize. And I know some people get caught up in bright, shiny objects, object syndrome. They get distracted. There's all kinds of cool things they can do. So one of the things that we're doing is, uh, and this is an upgrade. So this is a, a next step for anybody who wants to go even deeper. I'm hosting a live event uh, online on November 16th. It's called our VIP experience. And uh, it is going to be immersing you in a process of really understanding what your gaps are, where your priorities need to be, what needs to shift on the inside, what do you need to do differently in strategy. And then I'm going to teach everybody what my exact strategy is to add another five or maybe even six. And for some people, seven figures to your business in the next year. That's amazing. And I'm going to take you through my process. And Blue, this is like my, well, two more favorite parts. One, you guys are coming back. Some of our, of our uh, mm -hmm. featured experts are coming back to be on panel. And I'm going to put people into live collaboration currency pods so they can start building connections oh, cool. right then and there and leave ready to put some things in action. So I'm super excited about it. It's, a, it's the next step. If you want to take it, we'll make sure you tell you how to do it when you register. But I, I mean, it's just like, this is where you go from, I got great ideas, but I'm not doing anything to, I know exactly what to do. I'm on fire. I'm in momentum. And I'm going to be the person who's creating my own economy this moment and forevermore. Exactly. And I love that because I know a lot of folks get stuck or overwhelmed and, and I, somebody smarter than me, I can't remember who said, you know, overwhelm is not really um, not knowing what to do. It's just not knowing what to do next. What's the mm, next one thing that yeah. I have to do? So yeah. there's plenty of opportunities for that, whether you use my link or any of the experts link, there's some really, really valuable tools, tools there. So I encourage you guys to go get it. And before we wrap up, I'll just, just to remind folks, we're talking about getting off the revenue roller coaster. Uh, as I like to say, we've all been there, peaks and valleys of being an entrepreneur. Any other final tips in terms of just creating a more consistent uh, income flow and, and again, controlling your own economy, really? Yeah. Um, one of the pillars that I teach in the create your own economy philosophy is this idea of leverage. This mm -hmm. is not a new idea by any means, but most people don't know how to apply it. They think leverage is having a whole bunch of offers, right? <laughs> like I need to do a lot of, I need to have a lot of things for everybody. Mm -hmm. I actually believe, and I have tested this with my clients. I've tested this in my own business. This is my 21st year in business mm -hmm. is simplify to amplify. Oh. You want to simplify your focus, simplify your effort to amplify the reach, the revenue and the impact. And one of the ways that I teach that, and I'll get into this in the VIP experience a bit more, but mm -hmm. I teach something called identifying your unique profit amplifier. What is the one thing that when you offer it is massively irresistible? And <laughs> it's not just a one-time investment. This, this one first step that a client takes with you sells them on working with you again and again and again. So it becomes a profit multiplier for you because mm -hmm. they've already go, Oh my God, this is amazing. And then they want to keep working with you. So that's when they tend to join your membership or they'll invest in a mastermind or whatever that repeatable profits opportunity is uh, as mm -hmm. a service or as a product business. So yeah, I love that idea because a lot of folks would say, why are you doing this challenge for $27? And like, I can always, always, always go to my 10 day video challenge, no matter what. It's a low barrier to entry. Some of the people that bought that for $27 are now spending $2,000 a month on coaching. So that's why, yep. I, that's why I go totally. back over and over again. So yep. I wish we had like a little fire emoji that could go across the screen <laughs> right now, right? <laughs>
exactly. That's so, the hot strategy. Yeah. Um, any other final advice or words for folks in creating? Yeah. I, you know, there's something that, I, again, there's six pillars that I teach. You'll get all the pillars when you join us in the giveaway. I, it's in as part of the action guide. I highly recommend when you join us to download that, um, go through and really like assess for yourself. Where do I notice like I have like maybe a weak area or mm -hmm. I haven't strengthened this lot. And one of those areas for a lot of people is you brought up clarity earlier. That's mm -hmm. one of the pillars, but my favorite one is commitment. Yeah. And commitment mm -hmm. is not what most people think it is. <laughs> commitment mm -hmm. is I'm all in, like I'm going to mm -hmm. fully figure out how to pull this off. Even when things are scary, even when things are challenging, even when things are uh, not working the way I thought. Like earlier this week, you and I were talking about this in the green room. I was having all kinds of technology problems, right? Like we tested everything up and down and all the which ways and still there were some tech problems. And so when you're committed, you're like, okay, take a breath. What is it that will work? And there's a distinction that I think is so powerful. I learned this from a mentor of mine about 12 years ago, and it's just been always on my mind ever since is there's a difference between commitment and interest. Hmm. When you're interested in a goal, when you're interested in accomplishing something, mm -hmm. you're curious, you're exploring, you may invest in things, but you're not all in, in taking action to, that leads to this, to the outcome. Yeah. But committed people are all in and they're willing to be uncomfortable. They're willing to stretch. They're willing to challenge their assumptions, their beliefs. They're willing to transform anything they need to transform in themselves. Granted, staying authentic to our true self, but to pull off what they need to pull off. So they're willing to take the risk. They're willing to be scared and do it anyway. And I think that's an important caliber of creating our own economy is mm. the commitment. Exactly. That is a good note to end on. Thank you so much, Melanie Benson. Be sure to opt in for the amazing gifts that she's had all of us uh, contribute and give away in the Create Your Own Economy giveaway. Uh, I'm all in on this and happy to be here and look forward to our, all of our up, up VIP stuff and all that cool thing coming up. And this, you can get the gifts for free until November 5th. Correct? November 5th, yes. All right, so get on it, go get your goodies and we'll see you next time. Thanks and bye for now. Okay.